All right, welcome back to JK Fishing. Today we're gonna to show you a common problem that a lot of anglers or boaters encounter when they have a kicker motor that's offset from their main motor on the back of their boat. And they wanna be able to steer that kicker motor from the helm instead of having to manually control it with the handle on the kicker motor. So what we've done with our boat here today is we've actually built a custom um, steering rod that connects to the kicker motor from our main motor. Uh, what you'll see is we've got um, a quick connect, or a ball joint quick connect on the end, which is attached to a threaded rod, all steel and, and painted with black paint. Um, it connects basically to the front of the main motor very quickly for, for easy removal. And then it connects to this ball joint that you see here on the kicker motor. Okay, so once you you connect this by pulling that back, you've got it connected and then you can steer from the helm just like this. So as you steer, and if you want to point the camera there at the, at the motor, you'll see as I'm steering, the main motor turns and it turns the kicker motor. So now when you're trolling on the water, you can very easily steer from here, watching your rods as you troll out the back of your boat. Okay, we'll show you how we put this together, the materials, the tools that you're gonna need. Uh, let's head to the shop. All right, welcome to the shop. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, all the tools that are needed and the steps that we took to build this kicker motor steering bar. Um, this was actually the original one we got with the boat. Um, as you can see, it's very short. We had no way to connect this because it didn't reach from one to the other. So obviously some missing parts, uh, but what you can see is it's threaded on the two ends. This one was bent and wrapped in tape. So we, we made a much more sophisticated one that actually follows the shape of the boat so that with the offset motor, it would work a little bit better. Um, what you'll see on the end here, as I mentioned, it's got these quick release ball joints that allow you to uh, quickly pull it off and connect it to the ball joints that are on both motors uh, with a nut to hold it in place and the bar is threaded on the end. I'll show you the tools we use to do that. Um, I put a nice coat of paint on this just to prevent it from rusting. That hasn't helped that much, so we might have to, to do something else there. Um, but basically what we did to, to, with, with materials, we picked up the, the steel bar. It was a, a cold rolled steel bar from Princess Auto, about five feet long. And uh, we measured what we needed, eventually cut it. Um, it's pretty hard steel, but once you heat it up, it's, it's pretty easy to bend into the shape that you need. Okay, so when we started, um, basically the first end, I used a grinder, this one right here, bench grinder just to grind the edges a little bit and leave them not so sharp so that the, the die uh, would, would catch on. I bought this die, I actually had to look up what the size was because we already had the, the quick release ball joint, uh, the ball joint quick releases. Uh, I knew what thread it was. In this case here, we had to use a 30, uh, 3 8 of an inch, 24 NF. So I matched that, picked that up at Princess Auto as well. Um, so that I could actually cut the thread right onto the bar. So once, you, once I had this, um, I used a bench vise to fasten the, the piece of steel into the bench vise, just like so, just to keep it from moving anywhere. Um, now, when you buy a die, you can actually get a die holder or a die bar, I'm not sure what it's called. Um, I didn't buy one of those, but I had another solution. So um, we put the die on the end of the bar and I actually just used this ratchet, which I had a really big ratchet set here, and I was able to put it on the end and then eventually cut the die into the steel. Um, I used a little bit of penetrating oil just to help it go a little bit better, a little smoother. Um, it does take a little while, you have to go nice and slow, but you can get a really nice thread about two inches long on the end of the bar. Once I had the bar uh, initially threaded, I, I put the ball joint quick, uh, quick connect, and the, the nut that you'll see here holds it in place. Okay, I put those on the bar and I fastened it to the main motor as I already had the ball joint fastened on there. This allowed me to, to measure and see where my first bend was gonna be. Once I knew where, where my first bend was, I brought the bar back into the shop. Um, I used um, this propane flame torch um, to really heat up the steel once I put it in the vise, knowing where I wanted to bend it. So. Let's say you wanted to bend it at this point here on the bar. I had it marked with a, a piece of, uh, or with a magic marker. Um, I was able to heat it very, very hot. And then eventually the steel would just, would bend pretty easily for me. Um, so trying to get as accurate as you can to where you needed the bend to be. You, and using the bench vise as a guide for, for bending it. 
When I did this, I used a, a cooking mitt because I didn't want to burn my hands on the steel. I didn't know how hot it was going to be. So we had the first bend in the, in the rod like this. Um, I took it out. I went, I dipped it in the pool to co cool it down. You can do the same in a bucket or whatever you need. Um, then we took it back to the boat, measured where the next bend needed to be and did the same thing to, to put the next bend into the bar. So you can see it's relatively parallel here, these two bars, uh, the two bends. So um, they lined up nicely. Now, I ha because I had such a long bar or steel rod that I needed to cut off, um, once I had measured exactly where I wanted to line up on the kicker motor, where, where the, the ball joint was gonna be uh, attached, I was able to cut this off just with a hacksaw. Uh, any hacksaw will do. I just have a simple one, pretty cheap hacksaw you can get. And I was able to cut it very easily through by putting in the bench vise and sawing right through it. Again, I, I ground down the end and I put a thread in the other side and assembled everything together, okay? So that's how simple it was. Um, like I said, spray paint just to coat it so that it doesn't rust as quickly. So I think this steel would rust almost right away if you left it completely exposed. Um, now, the other thing that we did is with the, the actual ball joints themselves. We already had one on our main motor, so we didn't have to do anything with it, but we needed to put a bracket. If you look back to earlier in the video, you'll see um, a bracket attached to the kicker motor with a ball joint sticking off of it. Now, what I did is I picked up these. Um, these are actually for uh, decking purposes. You can pick these up at, at um, Home Depot. I got thin ones. You can actually get them thicker. I'd, I'd recommend that. And what I was able to do is um, line up where I needed holes drilled into these if they didn't already exist because it comes with some pre-drilled holes. And I used two of them just to make it a little bit stronger on the ball joint because when I had one in place, um, it was flexing all over when I tried to steer the motor. So I put two um, and then I put the ball joint through the hole and assembled it, attached it to the motor. Uh, in order to cut these to the desired length to stick out from the kicker motor, I just used a pair of aluminum shears or, or whatever these are called to cut them up. Um, and then I used a file just to file down the edges of the steel so it wasn't too sharp, okay? Uh, we'll put a couple pictures maybe into the video here so you can see exactly what everything looks like when it's assembled up close. Um, if you have any questions and you want to see how uh, or where to buy some of these materials, uh, we, can, we can respond. Just put it in the comments. Um, make sure you subscribe to JK Fishing. Uh, catch up on our, our upcoming trip to Lake Erie to do some walleye fishing and the big salmon tournament coming up on the long weekend where we hope to catch a big one.